All right, guys, what does a millionaire do to save money? Well, we just tape stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> and this is what you do. This is called creative finance. But that's not the topic of today's video. Today, we're gonna be giving you guys a breakdown of why I like executory contracts over novation agreements. In fact, I'm gonna be putting the no into novation agreements into this video. All right, so here's what a novation agreement is. If you guys haven't watched on the channel, we have multiple videos on what a novation agreement is. We do them frequently. Really, I would rather do an executory contract. I actually bought the property right here in this video. We'll put the link down in the description below on an executory contract. And in Arizona, it's called an agreement for sale. So it is essentially a sub two deal without transferring the deed. But in other states, they call them contract for deed or installment sale, sale of interest, land contract, bond for deed. Okay, these are all executory contracts. We use them all the time. I'll break them down a little bit more, but novation agreement. Okay, so let's break down what a novation agreement is very quickly, even though we've done it on the channel multiple times. I basically go to a seller and Pace comes in and says, hey, look, I wanna buy your house, but you're asking a little bit too much money. If you can allow me to flip this house and sell it to my buyer over here after I renovate it, I could afford it. The way you're asking for this money, I gotta pay you, let's say $200,000 for the house, $25,000 in closing costs. Hey seller, I'll get you your $200,000, but it's gonna be after the fix and flipper sells the property. So the fix and flipper takes the house, doesn't have to actually buy the house, and they take the property either in A, put it on the market without even putting um, any work into it. But most of the time, the novation agreements I've been a part of or seen my students doing all over the country are ones that require a renovation. And so this fix and flipper doesn't have to buy the house, they just put the money in, so they renovate it and then they put it on the market. So the their buyer, okay, the family that's gonna end up moving in this property brings the money and the fix and flipper receives their renovation, money plus their profit and the seller receives their two hundred thousand dollars at the point that this buyer over here the end buyer comes in and buys the property here's what i don't like about novation agreements and you run into this all the time you pace the wholesaler right the guy that's wholesaling this transaction and this the actual buyer the one that is going to do the fix and flip hi hi wife say hi to the wife okay so here's what i don't like wow are you kidding me corbin here, let's go, let's go see these girls. Hi. Are you and, is mom taking you to Disneyland? She's gonna go get the boys right now. Okay, love you girls. A novation agreement doesn't give you actual ownership and control of the property. So you have to have power of attorney, you have to have a whole bunch of things that give you essentially temporary control of that property. Executory contracts actually means you're the actual owner of the property. Guys, I say no to novation agreements and I say go do an executory contract. It's way safer, it's actual creative finance. This is creative stuff, but you're not actually the owner of the property and neither is your fix and flipper. You have lack of control. And you guys saw the video, we've already, we did the video about my student calling in and he lost money on the novation agreement. And so we structured it as a novation where we'd close in a couple of months. I made some critical errors, should get karate chopped for, I should have known better. What, what I would do, bro, is I would take this as the greatest story of your life, tell this story to a thousand people to avoid the money mistakes for them. And what I would do is say, how do I go get my, I would call my private money lenders and go, I lost your money. If you don't th do things so perfectly and watch every little, you can screw up on a sub two deal. You can screw up on a seller finance deal. You can screw up an executory contract deal. A novation agreement, you screw up one little thing and you lose your The other thing is, it is temporary, okay? So the conversation you have with this, holy what is going on with these planes today, dude? Oh, it's 1930s coming back, dog. That's. Let's say on your novation agreement, you go to fix and flip and the market dips. Look where we are, January of 2022. Market was hot, everybody's excited, right? No, it's like November 2022. The recession is just getting warmed up. It's gonna get nasty. So people that were doing novation agreements here, novation agreements here, novation agreements here, which a lot of people were, and they thought, oh, I'm gonna fix and flip it. I'm gonna make a bunch of money. Guess what you don't have the ability to do? You or your buyer don't have the ability to refinance on a novation agreement. You cannot refinance. When I have an executory contract and things are going south, I actually am the owner of the property and I can go get a refinance. The other thing is, 
okay? For the fix and flipper, they don't typically have the ability to bridge this gap in this relationship. So there's a break in the relationship and it becomes problematic, okay? I see it all the time. Real estate agents are actually taught agreement for sale, contract for deed, installment sale, land contract, bond for deed. They're taught this in real estate school. Before they get their real estate license, they are required to know what these things are. And if you're a real estate agent and you don't know what these things are, it's because you barely passed that test. Make sure you learn how to do executory contracts, which is actually the right way to do this. Novation agreements, in my personal opinion, are kind of a waste of time. There are very few circumstances where a novation agreement actually works. And come on board, be, be, be a student with me. Come hang out with me on Zoom. And in fact, right now, I'm actually going down to talk to my students. We've got a really big challenge going on right now where we're locking up a sub two deal live. I'll show you guys, like we go from making a YouTube video, trying to help you guys out, and I go down into the studio and I teach. We call attorneys, we call lenders, we do the things, we structure the deals, we put all the stuff together and we make the business happen live, right? And most of the time you guys are struggling trying to get into the business because all you're doing is learning how to do stuff on YouTube. So get off YouTube and come hang out with us on Zoom. By the way, guys, if you wanna be part of one of our free challenges, we do the a free challenge every single month. It's called the Elephant Challenge, okay? We do it every month. Over 1,500 people will submit their first offer today. So if you're trying to learn real estate, stop being on YouTube. YouTube's cool. It's there to like get you percolated, get you excited, but you need to plug into people actually doing the business. I'm gonna have Eric hang tight for a minute while I set this up and you're gonna see the activity. You need to be a part of something. Adriana and Jonathan Newsom are going to be calling agents simultaneously. Whoever gets a hold of an agent first, the other one stops dialing. Adriana, are we putting some stress and pressure on you? This is how we grow. This is how we get put, put in uncomfortable circumstances. You walk out the other side just going, holy moly, look at who I am. So what are we trying to win? We're, the first prize goes to the person who connects with the first agent. Okay, ding, 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 ding. Second prize goes to the person who gets line. I want the line. After everything Keanu taught you yesterday, I want you to say, okay, I will be submitting an offer tonight. You have won the race. The second you say, okay, I'll be submitting an offer tonight. Anybody excited about this, by the way? <laughs> if you guys walk away from this Zoom just knowing those things and knowing how to fill out paperwork and sending an offer, would you feel like you've progressed in your life? Next Elephant Challenge, we're gonna teach you even more about how and why you should be sending an offer. But the number one thing you should be doing today is saying, I sent an offer. If somebody rejects your offer and hangs up on you, was that a success or a failure? That is success. In fact, I will be so pissed off if you hit this magical unicorn and you get a contract on your first call. I will be pissed off, it's not fair. I want you to succeed the proper way and sometimes to succeed, you have to see that most of the time you're going to have people reject your offer. That is part of the success process. 